Hey guys, Double Wide Six, and today I have a carburetor from one of those Intec engines. I think it's like uh, probably like a 15 or 17 single cylinder tractor engine. And one of the common problems with these things is that they end up, the needle and seat ends up leaking. You can easily go and purchase a new aftermarket carburetor, which I've had good success with, for about 15 to 20 bucks, somewhere in that range. Now, the other way to repair this is if you get one of the wall broke carburetors. If you have a Nikki carburetor, I would just replace it. But if you have the wall broke carburetor, a lot of guys go through and replace the seat. There's a little brass seat inside the carburetor that you can replace and I've done that in the past and I even have a video on that which I can link underneath. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try and hone the seat which is something that's new. I made a tool to do that and that's what this video is going to cover. And we're also going to hone the needle. And I did this recently and there was some discussion in the video of how much pressure for using like a mighty vac will this hold and that question was actually from Kenny from Ken small engine out of Connecticut so this video is for you Kenny so if you're not familiar with Ken's channel I'll link that down below it's Ken small engine so I pulled this carburetor out of my parts box and it had a label on it that said leaky needle and seat so I have it hooked up to my mighty vac and we're going to pump it up and kind of see what it holds. So we're at four. And you can see, I'll let the, I'm letting go. A little hard to see in the light, but the, uh, the pressure is dropping. Okay? So it's, it's starting to drop, you know, right when it gets around four or five PSI. I'll pump it up and we'll see where the pop-off pressure is. So that's about seven and a half, eight. We're getting up close to 10, and boom, it pops off. So uh, we're going to try and do a couple tricks here and see if we can't fix this up. So we're going to start by removing the bowl here. Here's the float, the needle, and we have our little uh, piece of brass down there inside. So I'm going to remove the uh, mighty vac hose. Here's a look at the tool I made. It's for honing the seat. And the idea here is hone the seat and then you don't have to waste your time pulling the seat out, which probably takes about five, 10 minutes and putting in a new one. And also the cost of that part, which nowadays is almost as close to how much uh, an aftermarket carburetor would cost. So the way this works is this tool chucks up in a drill like that and I paint it red just so I can find it in my toolbox. What I'll be using for this procedure is this fine 360 valve grinding compound. That's a high grit and this is very fine. Most valve, comp valve grinding compound is pretty thick stuff. In fact, you know it's kind of sandy because you can hear it when they're uh, lapping those valves. You can really hear the sound. This almost looks like a peanut butter. So what we'll do is we'll take a little bit of this and we don't want to be messy. That's probably more than enough. That should be good there. And we're going to move the camera over and show you how to do this. It looks a little white 
um, slightly crusty and that's just because this carburetor is kind of oxidated a little bit and it's been sitting a while. So here we go, we're going to take our hone, we're going to get it nice and straight and we're going to spin the drill. So put it there, pick it up, put it there, you don't have to go that fast. And what we're trying to do is just get a nice ring around here so that the seat will actually seat. I'm going to put a little more compound on. And if you're wondering, this angle is 60 degrees. That's a pretty standard machining angle and I'm just kind of guessing but I think that's what it is. Alright, next step we're going to make sure that we get this gr the grinding compound out of there and that's why I took the hose off the Mighty Vac. So the first step in getting that compound out, I'm using this, uh, this stuff's nice because it's perfectly clear, you can kind of see what you're doing. Um, it's dielectrical grease, comes in a big can, it's pretty nice. Uh, been using it for electrical connectors and things like that. Uh, my trailer to be specific, I took a tractor off my trailer and then I tried to roll the <laughs> trailer past the tractor and I took off the, the back light and turn signal. Um, this did a fantastic job of pulling most of that out. The dielectrical grease is particularly sticky. So, I'm going to get another Q-tip, do that again, and then we'll clean that with uh, Q-tips. And I'm going to be using some brake parts cleaner for this one. Now obviously you want to make sure that you get all that compound out of there. I have this set up in the vise and I don't want to flip it over and all that. So uh, I'm just going to take some compressed air and blow it out. It should be pretty good. So now that everything's clean. We're going to take a fresh Q-tip. These happen to be wooden, but the uh, regular Q-tips will work for you. Once again, carb cleaner, parts cleaner. And we're using this Q-tip to polish this all up. And you can see we pulled some dirt and that looks pretty good. So this will look at our needle and you can see this has a, a rubber tip on it. I just made a video on this. A lot of times you get a groove around there. This needle looks pretty good except that I think the tip looks a little bit narrower than it should be. It should be like 60 degrees all the way. So uh, regardless, what we're going to do is hone this. And I just made a video on this. So what I have is 1,000 grit sandpaper. I'm going to use a little bit of this. I, I like this peen grease. It's like a penetrating grease. It's very thin. And then it, it kind of thickens. So put that on 1,000 grit wet sandpaper. And I'm taking the needle. You'll notice the end of it is round even though the needle kind of has like a triangular shape. And we'll chuck that up in the drill. It doesn't have to be too tight. And all we want to do is catch this oil and work on cleaning up that red tip. Need to get right to the edge of this paper.
it's not going to take much. You're just sort of honing it, resurfacing it. It's a little hard to see, but it looks really clean and really good. This is on pressure, it has vacuum. And we'll start pumping. So right now we are at five and it does not appear to be leaking. I'm gonna go up to about, just carefully trying to get to seven. There, there's definitely a marked improvement. And what I wanna do is I'm just gonna sit this thing here. Oh. Uh, hit the release. I'm going to put it right at 7. And we're going to come back in a minute or two. Okay, guys. So I've been fast forwarding the video. I've just been standing here for watching the camera count. It's been like two minutes. This thing has not budged. So now what I wanna do is slowly pump it up. I, I don't know what the pop off value should be or how much PSI it takes to pop the needle off there. But you guys might know that. So if you know a range for me, let me know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and pop this thing or uh, fill this thing up. I'm at nine, and you could see, we would just slip back a little to seven. So I think, let me, uh, looks like it's popping off around seven, but what you can see is it is reseeding. Uh, one other thing is that needle is not wet. All right, guys, so just so we have a baseline, this is a brand new carburetor. It's not the exact same one, um, meaning the other one's like for a Briggs engine and this is for a Tecumseh. So this one's at four and a half, five, seven. Oh, yeah, dude, that just popped off. So it looks like uh, our, our carburetor is doing pretty well. And you can see, now this one's brand new, it holds at about seven. And then as I go back, when it pops off, it comes back and it holds at about five. And that's what my carburetor was doing. So guys, I tested this out to about the best of my ability. And uh, you know, I'm not running a, a channel like Project Farm, but uh, anyhow, that, that's my test. And from what I could see from the results, I think that that carburetor is repaired and it's gonna work out really well uh, in the future for somebody. And uh, you know, I know some small engine mechanics might drive say 25 minutes to go pick up a, a needle to fix a carburetor like that, not to mention any names. But I think if you tried this at home, you might have good success. So, uh, Keep tuned, uh, I'll probably make a future video for you guys on how to make that honing tool. That was a homemade tool, and I think that could be handy for a lot of you out there. So guys, as always, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think down there in the comments. And Ken, thanks for the uh, suggestion. It probably put together a pretty good video for me. And I will also put a link down below to the Mighty Vac. I know some of you guys will be asking what, what was that that I was using. That's a Mighty Vac pressure and vacuum test kit. Take care, guys.